Ryan Horvat, and you heard it here first last week that Notre Dame would beat USC. But again, I don't know like what numbers you put into that. But for me, it was the fact that they lost to Louisville. They were always going to beat USC. Yeah, I know. That's kind of how I felt. Even like going into the season, I was like, oh, man, what a brutal stretch. Because you had Ohio State, then you had Duke in primetime, then you had Louisville in prime time on the road. And then you came back home and you had USC, but yeah, I felt like there was almost like nothing to lose, you know, because they've already lost two games. They know they're most likely not going to the college football playoff, but they could still have a nice little season. And you still always want to beat your rival. You always want to beat USC. So yeah, that was fun, man. Caleb Williams looked like shit, three interceptions, which is, I think he threw three all of last season. He's had a bunch of like turnover worthy throws this year. But it's because because of what I said. It's all like backyard playground shit with uh, USC. Lincoln Riley even called it out this week. That said, I kind of like USC this week against Utah. Utah's not very good this year. And that game's at USC, not in Utah. There's a reason why they're a touchdown favorite, even though they don't look very good. But big win for Notre Dame. Would have been really cool if uh, the Badgers could have got the job done. Bet them last minute is 10-point favorites. Why? Fucking Tanner Mordecai dies on the field. Although... Got to be honest, man. Tanner Mordecai kind of sucks. He's not uh, what I thought he would be. I, 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 and I, I didn't watch a lot of SMU last year, but I played a lot of DraftKings. Yeah. And Mordecai was like, oh, this guy will have 500 yards, five touchdowns, yep. and rush for 60. I mean, he was, a, he was an auto play, so I just figured we'd get something like that. And then he comes in here and looks like everybody. And then Graham Mertz is throwing touchdowns after touchdowns on Florida, not that he would have done it here, but whatever. Yeah. Hold on, though, because I see, like, this is what I love about, like, me watching all the games. Not to be that guy. But, like, I wouldn't freak out about, like, what Graham Mertz is doing at Florida. His A dot. I mean, he's throwing, like, it's all just, like, five-yard passes. You know what I'm saying? It's Well, and he's always, like, 20 for 48. He was in a shitty offensive system at it, 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 Wisconsin. I mean, he's still no good, though. Mordecai's no good. They're going to have to get a real quarterback to run that offense. Let's be honest, man. And. I almost like now they went down to being two and a half point favorites against Illinois. And I know Illinois beat Maryland, but Maryland was coming off their first loss of the season, you know, to Ohio state. I kind of think Wisconsin bounces back because I think the good thing is now like they'll knock off the, I know that you want to run the air raid offense, but right now just like run the ball. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it sucks losing Malusi for the year, but maybe this week they'll just pound the ball with the backup quarterback. Hopefully because like the offense, I feel like I'd watch it and they'd be cooking. You know, it'd be like six yards, you know, seven yards here. Like they're just picking up all this yardage on the ground. And then for whatever reason, they'd throw the ball with Mordecai and he'd just get picked off. So maybe they'll just ground and pound. They should be able to beat Illinois, I would think. Illinois sucks too. And this weekend's Ohio State, Penn State, right? Yeah, baby. I bet the uh, under in that game, 48 and a half. It's down to 45, but. I'll I've be been on air for that game for CBS. I'm just going to be watching it while talking. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, to be honest, if I'm driving around on Saturday, I, I would probably just want, like, updates on that game from uh, noon to three. Or, yeah, noon to three your time. Because it's, it's crazy because well, I, I mean, bet if, Penn, if that's the case, you could just listen to the play-by-play. -play, but I bet Penn State in the game, you know. But – um. I don't really know shit about either team. Like Ohio State, yeah, they beat North uh, Northwestern. They beat Notre Dame, but I think like Notre Dame's not very good. I mean, they got some guys, but they're not a good football team. They're they're not very well coached. I'll say that. You know, in Ohio State, like they haven't really clicked yet offensively. In Penn State, they have two really good running backs, but neither of them are averaging even five yards per carry because the offensive line hasn't been that good. And Drew Aller, like everybody loves him, but dude, he's completed five passes this season over 15 yards down the field. And now he has to see a real defense. So I like the under in the game. I like the first half under. I bet Penn State, but it wouldn't shock me if they got clobbered and they're no good or Ohio State's no good. The only thing I really know about the Big Ten right now is Michigan's the best team in the country, I think. It just comes down to are they going to shit the bed in the playoff again? I think they're better than Georgia. I think they'd beat Georgia on a neutral field. And if they win, Harbaugh's probably going to the NFL. Maybe, fingers crossed, if LaFlower doesn't get his shit together. <laughs> Would you want that? I can't, I, I think I might. I would take Harbaugh for sure. I would. Take I mean, like LaFleur, he's got – this year isn't really about like you're – Jordan Love, unless you're bad, bad, and you get Drake May, 
I kind of just want Jordan Love back. You'll have to give him twenty million a year, most likely, which is ridiculous. But uh, it, like if if Lafleur doesn't figure his stuff out, yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't know if Harbaugh would want to come to Green Bay though. He might. Um, we'll do some NFL picks. Yeah. So Saturday though, if you're if you're interested, Horvat does his countdown to kickoff show, which airs on twelve fifty in Milwaukee at eight a.m. Uh, and he does that show from where he lives out in D.C. I, from 11 to 4, will be in the 1250 building doing my five-hour show, which will not be aired in Milwaukee. Uh, that is a decision above my pay grade. I don't know why that still doesn't change, but clearly I'm not. I have no feelings on it. I'm also, if you're on the Dan Shaney YouTube stream, I'm in my uh, living room today. This is yes. where, this is like where we do puzzles. There's our you puzzle guys, chest. You guys into puzzles? Oh, we're doing a lot of puzzles right now, me and the boy. Yeah, yeah, we're into puzzles too. We still do puzzles, actually. Because I don't, I, 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 have limited, I have limited battery on my computer because I forgot my charger at 1250 where they Oh, barely, so we should probably get to the picks. Yeah, but I didn't want to use my ring light because it sucks up battery also. So I'm using mm -hmm. natural sunlight. And it doesn't even look that good. Anyway. Yeah, I can relate. I actually just realized I also have that same issue. I left mine at uh, MGM National Harbor. I have 38%. So, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so Thursday night's game, Jacksonville and the Saints. We'll do the same bit again. I was a little more entertained than I thought I would be in this one. Um, glad that Michael Thomas had two touchdowns. That ruled. No, I mean, yeah, that that was cool. Even though the Saints got uh, the Saints won, they blew out the Jags. What was funny is all these dipshit NFL reporters. It, it was the NFL reporters against uh, sports gamblers again because the line, you know, was two and a half. The Saints were two and a half point favorites. Pretty much telling you Trevor Lawrence wasn't going to play, but all day the Schefters of the world were like, he's going to give it a go. And all day we were telling you. It's a fucking short week. They're four and two. They're in one of the worst divisions. Why are you going to throw him out there on a short week against that pass rush, dog? I wish Schefter would just report and not do like, oh, I mocked up a McCall Hardman Chiefs jersey real quick. Picture from last year. That's well, not why people follow Schefter. That's why people follow fucking JFA football or whatever these fucking accounts are now. Here's the problem, man. Like McAfee, now that he's with ESPN – all these guys think they're like cool. Yeah. Right? And they all want to do like viral stuff and they all want to like make jokes. And, you know, I almost said something that would have got me in a lot of trouble. McAfee like, had the, the interview of the year that, that dime Chargers fan. Dude. She's look, kind of a babe, though. Fuck out of here. All right. No, she's, I mean, I, I, I maybe I, I, she I, is I, the sound, maybe. I see this is the kind of stuff though. Like I hate I hate the simulation that we're in right now. Yeah, I thought when we got to these times we were gonna have like flying cars and I was gonna be able to like put on a helmet and be like in the NFL game. Instead, I'm seeing some, some I thought lady. I was gonna be able to take a little like bean and add a droplet to it, and then like a full spread of chicken wings would appear. When's that we happen? Have, we have a chicken wing shortage. Yeah. Instead. It's fucking yeah, but when you think about it, life sucks. Life was a lot better. That's why I always talk about the 90s, because the 90s were great, right? Like, uh, we had it all, man. All you, all you really needed in the 90s, when you think about it, you needed, like, 10 bucks, right? Because you would go to, like, McDonald's, Subway, get some food, you'd get some snacks, and then you would just, you know, you'd watch games. I feel like even, like, games and sports were better in the 90s. I feel like guys cared more. Now, like, it's all, like, viral shit. I saw on social media today, GQ Australia, Ben Simmons on the cover, shirtless, and it says Ben Simmons is back. This actually has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah. But how many fucking times are we going to do this with Ben Simmons? He's no good. Like, he's trash. He doesn't care about sports. There is, anyway. You can look at fast. So when the world went from good to shit is when value meals started costing more than $5. Like you used to be able to get a burger, a drink, and a fry for five bucks. And then and then the the line of demarcation is when Subway got rid of their sub club cards. Yeah, what the fuck? And when that happened, when that happened, 
the world suddenly went from hopeful to we're just like floating on this rock until our inevitable doom. See, and this is the thing. I mean, um, it's, it's, it's crazy because like, even I went to McDonald's back in the day, like, you know, the value meal would be like $5 and 65 cents, maybe like $6. If you wanted to like upgrade it to the large now, like if I get Uber eats for Nathan, cause he loves fucking McDonald's, it's like 50 bucks. But even I went there the other night at like 1 a.m. because it was the only thing that was open. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm just going to get something small. So I got like three cheeseburgers and a small fry. And they're like $11.26. Yeah, then those the menu fuckers, goes one, two, three. Like but then cents. under, it says, it says big two. But then, then it lower, it says cheeseburger, 278. Yeah, but like they what? advertise it as two. And then you get it and it looks like it's fucking stepped on. You know what I mean? Like. That's why my dad always complains, not complains, but we always talk about like five guys. And I'm like, oh, I love five guys. My dad's like, yeah, it's just so expensive. I'm like, when you think about it, it is, but everything's expensive. And if I'm going to pay that much for a burger, I want it to at least look good. Not like somebody fucking stepped on it with their boot, which leads me to the Cleveland Browns, whose defense has been doing nothing this season, but stepping on people with their boots. They hit the road. They're taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson out for the year. I need a new fantasy quarterback. Colts catching three at home. You know, I'm going to take the Browns here. I feel like this is a trap game, especially with no Deshaun Watson. But I like that Browns defense a lot, man. Like a lot, a lot. Uh, and Gardner Minshew, I bet on the Colts last week. It was a huge mistake. It was just yeah, it was really bad. But there's going to be a good Gardner Minshew game. Actually, you know what? This one. Actually, you know what? Now that we're at three, give me the Colts. Give me the Colts. Yeah, I'm, Colts. I'm taking Indy. I'm taking the horseshoe. Yeah, you're right. Screw everything I just said because it was two and a half. Now it's at three. I'll take Minshew the Colts. Minshew back. Jonathan, yeah, he'll play better this I week. I want to see Garner year. Minshew shirtless on a GQ. Yeah, or pantless, maybe. I I think like another week he'll be a little bit more comfortable in the offense. Plus, Jonathan Taylor will be a little bit more comfortable. There you go. The shirt's coming off. GQ. Yeah. GQ uh, yeah, Milwaukee, G GQ West Dallas. I might be a B. Looking good, looking like you've been doing the the uh, the flies. Anyway, I take the Colts. Me too. Bills eight and a half point favorites. Uh, over the for my bunghole. <laughs> you actually do look exactly like Beavis, which is funny. It's. <laughs> It's actually, that's, that's pretty scary that you, yeah. uh, yeah, that, that my face is kind of melting off my skin it sucks, but is it? Why? Oh, I'm getting old. You should sauna too many brandies. What do you think of brandies? What do you think about Buffalo? Eight and a half point favorites over the Patriots on the road. Patriots. I bet on them last week. They should have covered, but Mac Jones is a stupid ass and he takes the safety. You know, Buffalo, man, they're beat up on the defensive side of the ball. Eight and a half points in a divisional game is a lot of points. I'm going to take another dog here. Give me the Patriots to cover, Bills to win. Bills have been, uh, I mean, that game Sunday night was ass. But the Patriots have no life. I'm going to take Buffalo. Do you think they just put them out of their misery? Yeah. I still I, I still think that there's a chance Belichick just – Stop showing up for work for a couple of weeks. Think so? He don't want to get fired. He don't want to like. I don't know. He was Bill Belichick's going to coach a three and fourteen season. Would you rather have Bill Belichick or Matt Lafleur for the rest of the year? Because you're a Lafleur hater. Yeah, I'd rather have Bill. No, I I don't know anymore about that man. I maybe I, I don't. Well, <laughs> I, I want Bill. I want Bill. To bring along a young quarterback. Look what he's done with Mac Jones. Sheesh. It's been a mess. Uh, uh, rough. It's been a mess there. Yeah, he fucked me last week, but we'll we'll go back to that well. I will at least. All right, I am gonna take a favorite here. Give me the Raiders. Three point favorites on the road against the Bears. The Bears are shit. There's no Justin Fields. I trust that Brian Hoyer knows the offense. And if something happens, Should the to Raiders Brian Hoyer, be my survivor. No, I don't think so, though, man. Because this is a weird game. It's too bad. The Bills were last back. week. I was by the skin of my teeth. Now, the thing about this game is I do want to take the Chicago Bears because there will be, you know, Bajan's going to have a nice game 
And then, you know, our friends at the score will all of a sudden say, is this the uh, Justin, F-? you know, it's going to be a whole week of that. So I like the Bears to get a dumb win. Yeah, I'm not going to like bet this game, but I am going to bet something in this game. In fact, Plus, I'm, I'm, I'm the tight. I'm using Titans theory about the Raiders here. So now people are like, oh, fuck, the Raiders are three and three. And then they're going to go shit one to Chicago. I'm going to take Devontae Adams over six and a half receptions. And I'm going to take Devontae Adams anytime touchdown. Came out, he's frustrated with the Last offense. Last time we did this, he did shit against us. Wants more targets. Yeah, but uh, this is the Bears without their starting fucking corner. Eddie Jackson's out. Their two slot corners are out. They're not good even with those guys on the field. Give me the Raiders and give me all the Devontae props. Just give me the light. All right. Oh, the Fighting Tobies go from being two-and-a-half-point dogs to two-and-a-half-point favorites against the Giants. I'm going to take another favorite here, Bart. Give me the fighting Tobies as two and a half point favorites. People are thinking, hey, the Giants aren't that bad. They actually should have beat the Bills if Darren Waller would have got that flag in the back of the end zone when his cock was being held. But here's the thing, right? The Giants aren't good. And the Commanders, their defense, also not very good. You could hit them with the explosive passes. But you know who can't hit explosive passes? Daniel Jones. You know what happens if Daniel Jones can't play because he's still got a neck injury? Terod Taylor plays. He can't hit, hit explosive passes. Even if they could, who the fuck are they throwing the ball to down the well, field? Maybe I'll take the Commanders. I like the Commanders this week. The Fighting Sam. No, I mean oh. as a survivor. Give me the Tobies. Uh, I don't know. Do you oh. hear who my actual survivor pick is going to be? You will be mad about it. All right, who do you like in the game? You like the Commandos too? Uh, well, I want to take the Giants, but they cannot score. Yeah, they're fucking terrible. They can't score. So I will take the Fighting Tobies, yeah. What did the Giants and Bart Winkler in 2004 have in common? They can't score. Yes. Got his ass. Kids still got it, even on an hour of sleep, baby. All right. Although the it is 2023, birds. Ryan. The Dirty Birds from Atlanta hit the road. They traveled to Florida with a bunch of old people, a bunch of fucking hillbillies. But you know what's great about Florida, Bart? The weather, the ocean, and you don't have to pay taxes. And you got Baker Mayfield hanging out at dive bars with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. What a feel-good story. But you know what? All good things, unfortunately, must come to an end. Desmond Ritter always plays like shit on the road. Plays better at home. I think he shocks the world. Throws a couple touchdown passes to our boy Drake London, who is not in London, but he's scoring in Florida. Just like Horvat did in spring break. In the year 2006, I also got my eyebrow pierced and it got infected because I went in the ocean after it was a dumb mistake. I also had bleach blonde tips at the time. I was listening to a lot of SR71. Remember them? Give me the Dirty Birds. Two and a half point dogs against Tampa. I just saw a tweet that Tampa's a a 78% chance to make the playoffs if they win this football game. Uh, And Mm -hmm. I think that they will win this football game. Baker Mayfield is proving why he was selected number one overall, just like uh, all the great number one overall picks of all time, including Irving Fryer, the number one overall pick in 1984 to the New England Patriots. Yeah, this is how we should do the picks for the rest of the show today. This is great, actually. Just, Just breaking it down like a classic NFL films bit. The Baltimore Ravens head back home to Baltimore. I'm 20 minutes away from this stadium, and let me tell you, place sucks. The weather sucks. <laughs> the, sucks. the people suck. It's a fucking dump. Even the people out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the uh, Ravens are three point favorites. Dude, this game is going to be awesome oh, uh, against the Lions. I think this is the one o'clock circle game for me, especially because the Packers play at 425. Oh, this is a big, this is a big, this is the second biggest game of the week. Let me say something really quick. I am so happy that the Packers play a fucking football game on a Sunday for what feels like the first time this year because. I feel like every curtain long with Sparky, like we do it three times a week, and there's like a game a month for the past. Doesn't it feel like they just never play? And then when they do, they no. just get their ass kicked and they just like talk about it. And it's like hard to really feel good when the last thing you remember was Jordan Love throwing three picks against the fucking Raiders. But I do like the Raiders this week against the Bears. And I also like another favorite here in the Baltimore Ravens. Lamar last week, his offensive line was healthy for the first time since week one. And I love what they're doing on offense, man. Bunch of three wide receiver sets. When Lamar does run, he's running into light boxes, kind of like a young Horvat back in the day. And the defense for the Ravens, 
getting a little bit better every week as they get a little bit healthier in that secondary, which they do this weekend. I like the Lions. I think they're a good football team, but I think they uh, they fall to 5-2 and two this week as Jared Goff throws a costly interception in the fourth quarter to Patrick Queen, and then everybody will be like, Hova, remember when you wanted to drive Patrick Queen? We don't care about T. Higgins anymore. Shut the fuck up! Give me the Ravens, baby. Three-point favorites. The Lions are in a good spot because they're coasting behind the Niners and the Eagles. Like, they're going to have this season with no pressure because everyone's going to be focused on those two teams in the NFC. Lions are going to win 13-some games here. They're lucky. Like, they need to look back and be thankful they lost that game to Seattle because had they not, they'd be the lone undefeated team. Then, if they beat Baltimore, they'd be 7-0. and Listen to their upcoming schedule. This is the Lions' schedule. Chargers, Bears, our shitty team, Saints, Bears, Broncos, Vikings, Cowboys, Vikings. That's a 12-13 win football season. Unfortunately, they will not win this weekend as Lamar Jackson, with the big eight on his chest, is going to get things done. And that is about the worst type speech I've ever made for anyone, but he will accomplish his goal. I thought you were going to predict him to throw eight touchdowns for the jersey on his chest. Not one, not two, not three, but two touchdown passes for Lamar. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right, uh, Arizona, Kyler Murray's back at practice, but he ain't oh, yeah. playing in this game. I kinda, well, I would, I like, oh. would, could he win a quarterback competition against Josh Dobbs right now if if they were paid the same amount of money and both guys came in for the first day? I don't think so. I think he oh. is bad. Oh, I think he's good. I just think that I think he's good when he's healthy. I just think like I think if he would have I think if he would have stayed in baseball, the A's would not even think about moving to Vegas. He really fucked over that city. They should be mad at him. That's not true. Nobody oh, would it is true. He would have saved the franchise. You he would have been the premier second baseman in the game. He'd be batting 380. He'd be he'd be like He'd be 25. He'd be, he'd be, he would have done whatever Ronald Acuna did. He would have done that four times. No, right now. no. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. No. Uh, he would be the first guy to steal 150 bases in a season. What do you think about the Seahawks as your survivor team at home? Uh, so here is why I don't want to take that because every year in survivor, the way that I get bounced is by that kind of game. Yeah, yeah. An afternoon game where it seems like they're, what are they, eight points? Uh, seven and a half. Yeah, you're close. And everybody's going to be on Seattle. So yeah. I'm in a little small one, the one I have on Splash Sports. I think I'll take Seattle in that one to hedge against the other one I'm doing. But we have not got to my survivor pick yet. And it will, like, I am basically, well, hey, every game's got two teams and you can only pick one. So, I am uh no my survivor pick is is criminal what I'm about to do. Oh, like Fiona Apple. Yeah, all all I need is a good defense and I feel like I have that in my survivor pick. I feel like the Arizona Cardinals are going to be some smooth criminals and they're actually going to steal a victory in Seattle. Hey, I'm not taking yeah. Arizona is winning this game. Gosh, Arizona Dobbs. is winning this game. Dobbsy, as frames would call him, he knows that Kyler Murray's coming back. And uh, so now he's going to try to ball out because, like, let's face it, he's not going to be a starting quarterback much longer in this league. So he's playing with house money. I think he goes out there and throws not one, not two, but count them three Dobbs touchdowns against Air, uh, Car- Seattle, wherever they play. And, uh, they, and they actually win that game outright. But I'll just take the points, Cardinals, plus seven and a half. We head out to Los Angeles where the people are weird. They don't eat a lot of carbs. There's a ton of traffic. Clayton Kershaw and Matthew Stafford both live there now and they're best friends since childhood. The Rams are three-point favorites. The Steelers, three-point dogs. This is a tough one to call. I actually kind of like the Rams in this game to win, but give me the. I got to take the points with the Steelers, right? It's Mike Tomlin as a dog. We're getting a full field goal. Maybe we're hyping up the Rams a little bit too much because Cooper Cup's back. Yeah, give me the Steelers. Steel Town, bitches. Well, here's how I'm going to pick this game. Who do the Rams have next week? Uh, Rams upcoming schedule. They have the Defenders. No, they have the Cowboys. Okay. Because the, the Rams road. are going to be 
the Rams are going to hover around. They're always going to be one game below or 500 all season. And if they're 500 now, that means they're going to lose next week. So they're going to win this game. So I'm going to take the Rams to win this game. Um, no. In the Jerome Bettis Bowl, I will take the Rams. All right, I didn't even good call. Good call on that. All right, we'll hold off on the Packers. 425 game. So we will move on to ooh, Chargers Chiefs. Chiefs, five and a half point. Well, Chiefs I've already used as my survivor, so it ain't this one. I think they lose too. I think the Chargers win this game outright. Now everybody thinks the Chargers stink. They just lost to a good Cowboys team. Justin Herbert's beat up, but he's got to have a bounce back performance. Um yeah, give me the Chargers at least to cover. It's a divisional game. They always play them tough. I think this is a field goal game. So I'll take uh, the Fighting Herberts plus five and a half. A lot of shit talking about him this week. They'll bounce back. There's going to be a play where Kadarius Tony and McCole Hardman run the exact same route. And uh, McCole Hardman will stop short and Tony will run into him. And they'll like morph bodies and be the one person that will actually make up a good receiver. And then they'll take a little splash of MVS and sprinkle it in. I'm with you on the Chargers. I am as crazy as that five-headed lady. You know, I got a – she, she's the one person with a bigger forehead than me. And got a I forehead just like Tyra. I I think she is beautiful. Tyra or that lady? The lady. You should sing some James Blunt to her. She could see from my face that I was – Fucking high and but on the radio high. edit, it's flying high. It's flying. Yeah, high. I didn't like that though. Like, I wanted to know that he was high on that train, like too high to even talk to him. Here's a radio music. I can I, that's something I could relate to back in college. Like one time, I was at the international sandwich shop with my boy John, and I think I fell in love. But I was so fucking baked, and I was on a couple mushrooms too, and I just I couldn't even form words. I just instead laughed. We played this song in Fond du Lac called, uh, it was Lady Gaga, You and I. And yeah. she goes, thankful I love you, Nebraska, you and I. But then WIXX in Green Bay found a version where she says Wisconsin. And then my listeners were like, do what WIXX does. Say, oh, I was so mad about it. Yeah, why would you want to do that? Jake and Tanner, fucking pieces of shit. Oh, yeah, those guys stuffed you in a locker. They cucked you. Yeah, they did cuck me. They Adam 22 would you. If you yeah, know at, not. The, at, the, at the cream puff. At the cream Are puff. you on – Jesus. Are you on the Chargers in this game or the Chiefs? The uh, Swift. Uh, I, as the as Swift passionate as that lady was for the Chargers, that's how I am when I see her. I'm taking the Chargers. Who would you rather you know what with, her or Taylor Swift? Oh, Taylor is – the most beautiful woman on this planet. Oh, baby, now we got bad blood. Do you know that she put Travis Kelsey on the map? I think they're really in love. Hear me out. So Travis Kelsey now wants to actually move because he doesn't want the paparazzi all up in his business, like Ludacris once said. Get the fuck about my business. Where does Taylor live? Does she live in the City of Angels? I don't know. Is she Kelsey going to request a trade to the Rams? Is Kelsey? Yeah, maybe. All right, here's a good one. Here's a, this is actually the Ryan Horvat. If this bet doesn't cash, I have to cut my own hair. Gone is the Starbucks. Got to make my own shitty coffee. And I actually got to fake COVID, take one of these COVID tests and somehow fake it because I won't even be able to afford gas to drive into D.C. all week for work because I like the Philadelphia Eagles, baby, to bounce back. Everybody loves the Dolphins. Everybody thinks Jalen's shit because they turned the ball over four times. They go back home. I think they're going to run the ball right down the throats of those Dolphins, whose defense is still shit. Fangio, you old balls. Uh, Eagles, minus two and a half. I bet this one pretty big last night, actually. It it went down to two and a half, so all the sharp money's coming in on Miami. I don't give a shit. I'll go. I'll be a Joe on this one. Give the me sharp the money's coming in on Miami, huh? Yeah, people like Miami. It opened at four, and it's down to two and a half. I mean, I would have liked Miami at four, but under a field goal, I think the Eagles win this game and bounce back, and I've actually been pretty low on the Eagles this year. I think they're going to be able to run the ball, control the clock, keep two on that offense on the sidelines. Defense might even have a takeaway in this game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Miami a little bit beat up in the backfield right now. I like the Eagles to bounce back. The Eagles are my survivor pick of the week. Really? I'm doing yeah. 
I'm doing it. I'm yeah, no, I, it. I, I, got them, I got like 1K on them. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it. They're my, it's, it's a $50 pool. You yeah. know it. The winner yeah. gets like a year's salary. There's so many fucking people in this thing. Everyone's going to take Seattle. Seattle's going to lose. And I'm going to be the one per- What this? Did this guy mean to take the Eagles? You're goddamn fucking right I did. And if you're thinking you can give me the stats, you can give me the sharp money, what yeah. the Sharps haven't done, I'll tell you what the Sharps haven't done or they wouldn't bet on this game. They yeah. haven't looked at the uniform database website where it shows you what these teams are wearing. And the Philadelphia Eagles are wearing the Kelly greens and there ain't no way Jalen Hurts is throwing on the threads that QB Eagles made famous in Tech Mobile and not coming out of the vet with a fucking victory. Fly, yeah. Eagles, fly. Go, Birds! Yeah, people also forget that Bradley Cooper is an Eagles fan. He will be in the box. My new updated power rankings of people I want to go to the club and get fucked up with. Uh, number one, Matthew McConaughey. Number two, Bradley Cooper. Because I saw, remember the Spike TV Awards? No. He won a Spike TV Award and he still has like the horns hung up on his wall. Uh, number three would be Dr. Fauci. Who? Dr. Fauci. Do you want to you want to debate him? What the fuck is going on in Rogers' head? I'm just like I don't think he knows what year it is. I think he thinks it's 2020. Yeah, why is he doing this again? I don't know. Yeah, I the Eagles are my pick. No fuck. No fucking lie. No lie. Yeah, me too. Because I'd rather I would rather dip out of my survivor pool with a like bold decision that I made. Rather than get fucked by Josh Dobbs. I feel like, you know, who's going to be a popular pick is this next game. Let's just hit on the Monday real quick and then do the Packers. Or do you want to do vice versa? No, I uh, Monday. Okay, good. Because I feel like everybody's going to take the Niners because they're the Niners. And everybody's going to think, oh, Minnesota is shit. But Minnesota at home scares me a little bit. And they were able to move the ball even and without Justin. prime time Kirk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take the... I'm going to take the Vikings to cover, though, the six no, and a half. I, I think the Vikings win this game. In fact, that's the my bold prediction. I'm not going to, like, bet that with my own money. I wouldn't encourage anybody else to, but for show purposes, yeah, give me the skull. Skull. My hands can't actually do it. It's, like, gravitational. If I told you, and I'm not, talking, if I'm, I'm not talking team success, you should pull question this, or you should bring this up on CBS Sports or something. If – I could tell you that, and again, it has nothing to do with team success throughout the fucking primetime record, because I think that's a little overblown. Because I think Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. If you I know told what's you, underblown? What? You? What do you think about the Vikings? Hold on, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, here's my question, right? I'm tired. ADD's kicking in. So, if I told you, stats-wise, Jordan Love, for the next 10 years, can have the same stat numbers as Kirk Cousins, would you take that? Probably. Or do you think that there's a higher ceiling? I would settle in at Kirk stats. Would you? I don't know. He's not going to be a Hall of Famer. Too. Jordan Love's not going to be a Hall of Famer. But wait, week one after the Bears game, I think you you announced he was going to be a Hall of Famer. That's why I'm asking. I was just fucking with the Bears fans. No! You can't do that. I think you said it against after the Saints, too. Why were you fucking with the fighting Dettiliers? <laughs> Why? So you're taking the Niners here? The to do Why? Why would you? You're you like his favorite fucking person on earth, Mike Dettelier. We had him on the show last night. I love him. You look like a South Park character when you wear that hat. I know. Wait, I don't. I don't like how I look. I don't like any part of this. No, right now it's a good look. You look like a guy. You look like the dude that's like trying to sell the car, but he's also strung out on Coke, so you kind of feel uncomfortable, even though he's probably going to give you the better deal. Well, it's the beanie and the polo look I'm going with. It's just not a good look. Yeah, I call that sophomore year. <laughs> uh, you know what you should start taking? Some vitamin. Every time I get sick, our bosses, our, our bosses are always like, why don't you take vitamin C? I take and emergency. I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that would help. Or... I could sell my child who goes to school with other fucking kids who are sick nonstop. 
but you know. All right. So the other survivor pick possibility was the Packers, but I'm just not touching that at all. All right. So I'm a little worried about this game, but I've decided, I told Steve this on the latest uh, Curtin Long, that this is the biggest game of the year for the Packers. Yeah. Because when I looked at their schedule, dude, there was like a couple wins that I had circled. Like, you know, when we win loss, Raiders were a win for me. What about you? Uh, They should have won that game. I like Romeo Dobbs over three and a half receptions. I don't think Jordan Love throws a pick in this game. I think he plays much better. I'm a little worried, though. Um, God, a lot of, lot of money coming in on Denver. That's actually kind of scary. Uh, people I like, too. Sheesh. Do I have to pick this game? I don't want people to be mad at me. Let's not pick it. Let's not no. pick it. I'm going to pick it. Packers bounce back, baby. Aaron Jones, 15 to 20 touches in this game. Give me all the Aaron Jones props. This is a dream matchup. Here's how the Packers win this game, right? If Aaron jo- okay, actually, uh, let me cap out. Packers win if LaFuck gives Aaron Jones 15 to 20 touches. <laughs> Packers lose this game if Aaron Jones doesn't touch the ball until the second quarter. Fair? I don't have a good feeling about this game is all I want to publicly say. I don't have a good Broncos, feeling about this game. No, you know what, the Broncos man? Broncos are terrible. They are this terrible. Is why, this rest of the year is going to be hard to watch if they lose this game because the Broncos right now, I think, are intentionally trying to lose games. None of those guys want to be there. Jerry Judy wants out. Cortland Sutton wants out. Everybody on the defense wants out. This is a team that let the Dolphins score 70 on them. And I know that, like, I know they were competitive against the Chiefs, but I expected that because it was a standalone primetime game and all those guys are trying to get traded into better situations. So they were going to go out there and play hard. Like, who gives a fuck at 425 when the Chargers are playing the Chiefs? You know what I'm saying? And the, and the Rams are playing the Steelers. And the Seahawks. All right, well, are then I, I I will take the Packers. I'm gonna take the Packers. Yeah, I'm gonna say Packers. I'm gonna say in a blowout, like 37-10. No, I'm gonna take them to win. In one, and it's gonna be a win where you actually like feel like you lost. I think here's my prediction. Okay, Packers. No, they win this game 37 to 13, and the good people out in Wisconsin wake up to this report. The Packers defeated the Denver Broncos 37 to 13 on the road on Sunday afternoon at 4:25 p.m. Eastern. Jordan Love threw three touchdown passes, 475 yards, setting a career high. Here's what he had to say after the game. It was good. Next up for the Packers, they hit the road to take on I forgot who they play next. That's that's what I think we get. I think we get a report. I think they play Minnesota. The Packers hit the road to take on the Minnesota Vikings on Thursday night at Lambeau and Sunday. The Packers return home to Lambeau Field to host the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, M- Mark Murphy once said, if we're playing noon games at Lambeau, that means we suck. Three of their next four games are noon games at Lambeau. Justin Jefferson will miss the game, but Jordan Atison will <laughs> be healthy. KJ Jeffers. <laughs> KJ Jeffers will be active. And he he also has a red convertible and loves the movie Casablanca and how to be a player with Bill Bellamy. Guys, so we talked to uh, Devin White, and uh, he, he's got nine horses, and they're all named after fucking constellations. Uh, the, best would be, the best would be, hold on, let me do a little behind-the-scenes thing. Like, at least you would just, like, so Clemens, let's just, be, let's just say what it is. So Mike Clemens would call in with his cuts. And it was the most nerve wracking part of my day because if anything got fucked up, even though the system was shit, like <laughs> it really, really ever worked, he was pissed, right? Like everything had to be perfect. But like, so you would just ask questions, right? And he would be like, Dev- you know, tell us about the fucking horses, <laughs> you know, Mike, Devin, oh, get this Bart, you know, Devin White, he has three horses. Oh, whole shit. But the best or the worst, I should say, would be when you'd produce for Bill. And this guy was so fucking lazy that he wouldn't, like, you would have to type up the cues, like Radio Joe. Producing Bill's show was way too goddamn complicated. It was like a, you had to train for three weeks just before you got to produce a four-hour sports talk show, right? You had to put the cues in there, you know, um, 
the the boner pill play of the week. Oh, and this one comes from Jordan Addison, a 31-yard touch. And then you're trying to fire the clip. But the best would be for Clemens, you'd have to have, like, all the cuts and the cues. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> he would just be, oh, and, and uh, Mike, and uh, tell us about Devin White's horses. I don't know. Maybe it's just that you had to be there story. But doing a talk show should have well, never been there. I don't think he read the cue. Like, there's a thing in our business where – we'll get copy. And for some reason we won't read over it. Like I was doing PA. I told the story, but not to you. I was doing PA for a soccer game in Madison, 5,000 people there. And Mm -hmm. there was, it was Latino night and they were honoring some lady who had this grocery store that really is the lifeblood of a neighborhood that keeps these people fed. Yeah. And uh, the word was underserved. And so I said, reading the copy for the first time, and she provides groceries to the undeserved. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, here, you don't deserve these fucking Cheetos, but take them anyway. <laughs> I don't, you don't deserve this bread and water. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, that was just, I was always, I would always get a kick out of it because I was like, man, I'm probably never going to host a show ever in my life. And this is just... And uh, and then uh, <laughs> just reading off a sheet. Anyway, those are the picks. Horvat, thanks as always. Yeah, uh, twenty minutes turned into forty-one as always. I'll see you later. Bye.